Today we're at Monza, the Temple of Speed, and we are driving on this exciting and fast circuit with the VI-grade cable-driven DIM 400 driving simulator. Monza is a relatively flat track with no large altitude changes and is characterized by long straights followed by tight chicanes and fast corners. Because of the flatness of the track, most of the ground plane movements to the driver will be provided via the disc frame motions, although high frequency input is delivered by the redundant degrees of freedom of the hexalift. Due to the inertia compensation system, the motion of the disc frame is decoupled from high frequencies. Let's start the test drive. At the end of the pit lane straight, we have chicane one called Prima Variante. Drivers brake intensively with fully tightened active belts which reproduce the strong forces developed by the aggressive 5G's real-life deceleration. After the braking, a quick change in direction is accurately reproduced thanks to the amount of yaw angle and impressive yaw velocity developed by the DIM 400, which is vital to give the driver the correct sense of where the vehicle is heading to. If the driver hits the kerbs, the vertical dynamics from the hex lift accurately replicates the vehicle motion, providing the driver with very realistic feedback. After a long right turn, we reach chicane 3, called Variante della Roccia. This chicane is faster than the first one. The driver doesn't see the entire trajectory while entering due to a slight vertical curvature. The driver, when approaching the chicane, brakes with full force just matching the turn distance signs. The braking action is reproduced by the disc frame longitudinal movement and by the active belt. Then, while approaching the turn, the driver releases the brake pedal to modulate the deceleration. During this maneuver, the disc frame first moves quickly backwards and then, because of the large available longitudinal workspace, follows the action of the brake pedal giving a proportional feeling of deceleration. For this maneuver, the disc frame is pre-positioned forward so that the entire longitudinal workspace can be exploited. While the driver changes direction, he receives the right cues from the platform motions. The X, Y and yaw degrees of freedom are independent of each other and in this maneuver they are exploited close to their limits. The hex lift is ready to give vertical cue in case the driver goes over the curve. After the driver drives through the two Lesmo corners, the long Serraio turn undulates as he passes under the bridge before Variante. The tarmac here is very bumpy and the hex lift delivers the right vertical accelerations to the driver. We're now at turn 7, the Variante Ascari. There is a very fast left-right-left -left combination at nearly full throttle with no braking, and the lateral and yaw displacement are the main movements of the platform, which are perfectly replicated by the harmonized coordination of hex lift and disc frame motions. We are now at the last corner of the track, Parabolica. Here again we have a combined braking and turning action with a residual braking action at the beginning of the turn. The disc frame moves naturally backwards and to the right while turning clockwise. During these combined planar motions, all the six degrees of freedom of the hex lift are active and contribute to deliver to the driver the right acceleration intensity during quick transients, without propagating the disturbance effect of the payload inertia to the disc frame due to the simultaneous counteractions of the inertia compensation system. The large workspace of the disc frame is once again very important in order to correctly simulate the entering in this turn with a combined action on the steering wheel and brake pedal. Micro corrections on the steering wheel during the corner are felt by the driver thanks to the fact that the disc frame has enough workspace available. The active seat's steady action during the turn helps the driver sense the long duration and the variation in the lateral acceleration. Driving in Monza with the DIM 400 simulator with a properly tuned F1 model helps to understand how setup changes allow the driver to push to the limit of performance. The Monza track is very challenging for extreme braking and long turns which are often preceding long straights, therefore requiring maximum efficiency in very late braking actions which are often carried on during entry, in early throttle application during turn exit, as well as aggressive curb attacks. The DIM 400 is an excellent machine for that, due to the big planar motion of the disc frame under the combined accelerations and the fast motion of the hex lift when the vehicle hits the curb.